Hey everybody, it's Julian or Flow Graphics here and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create and animate pixel art in Photoshop and how to actually save out that animation as a sprite sheet as well. So just full start to finish, create a little pixel art character, animate them uh, and then export them so you could actually use it in a game or an animation or anything like that. So let's get straight into it. I'm just in Photoshop CC. Pretty much any version of Photoshop should be fine for this. So I'm just going to open a new document. Let's go file new. We're just creating pixel art. So a pretty small document should be fine. I'm just going to go 30 for my width, 30 pixels for my height, uh, resolution 72 color mode RGB is perfect. I'm going to hit OK. Uh, my document's pretty small. So I'm just going to hit control plus and zoom in a bit now. Uh, I'm going to have to hit it a few times <laughs> to get that up, um, up to scale. So now what I'm going to do is just double click on this background layer make that into um, just a regular net layer now. Uh, I don't really quite like working on white. It's sort of, it's a bit hard to see. So I'm just gonna hit Control U to bring up my hue and saturation and drag down the lightness a little bit. Uh, something that may be different for you, and you may realize this as you drag down that lightness, is there is a pixel grid which is on by default. So you can just go to View, Show, and then Pixel Grid. I don't really like working with it, but if you like working with it, that's fine for you. It won't change anything to do with your document. It's just purely visual. So if you like having that on, um, have that on if you like, but I won't. So um, zoom a little bit more. Let's just start creating our character. So I'm just going to hit a new layer in the bottom right here. Uh, I have some sort of colors already up the top that I work here with, but you can use any colors you want. Uh, and obviously for pixel art, we're going to need to use our pencil tool. So you can hit B to go to your brush tool and it'll just go to your regular brush, which will just sort of be this blurry, yucky looking brush. Uh, but what we want is to click and hold on the brush tool and you can see it brings up these sort of sub tools under that heading and we can just go to pencil tool. So this way it will just make sort of like a really fine distinct line um, and it'll just go pixel by pixel. So I'm just using my regular circle brush size down to one pixel, hardness all the way to zero. So I'm just gonna start creating my little man here. So you can create whatever character you want. Uh, obviously this is purely just for sort of tutorial purposes. So um, it doesn't have to be amazing or anything. Like I'm just sort of doing whatever here um, as well as what you're working on as well at home. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, amazing. Um, one thing, just a little tip when you're working on pixel art that can make your life a bit easier is I like to always use my marquee tool to sort of move things around. So I'm just gonna hit M to get my marquee tool. I wanna make this leg go in a bit. So I'm just gonna hit uh, V to go back to my move tool and then just hit my arrow and just move it in a little bit. I think that looks better like that. And then I'm gonna get some red, make a shirt for this guy. Um, you may actually recognize this, this, the guy I'm making is starting to look like someone uh, that I've made before. So let me know in the comments if you can actually recognize who you think this person looks like. Um, but I'll just add some arms uh, and then let's add a little head. Uh, I don't I don't like that big square head. Let's give him a little bit of a neck <laughs> So like that and then we'll give him a little hat like this and Okay, I think that's good. So we've got a little character now. Um, he's got a pretty big butt on him Maybe I'll just erase that I did just hit E to go to your eraser So I'll just erase that so I've got my little pixel art character now and now we want to animate him So I'm just gonna position uh, him sort of down in the bottom of the scene right now so to actually create the animation and start working on the frames, you just want to go to window uh, and then it'll bring down this drop down here and we just want to click on timeline. So this will bring up this little bar down the bottom of the screen and it says for me create frame animation, but if it doesn't say that, if it says create video timeline, just click on the little arrow to the right of it, go to uh, frame animation, we don't want video, and then just click that button and then we just created a frame. So what we can do now, just like in the layers system, we can actually create a new layer in our timeline and that adds a new frame to our little animation. So what I'm gonna do is on that second frame, I'm just gonna turn off this layer that we've just made of that person, hit Control J to duplicate that layer, and then turn the layer we duplicated on. So if now if I move this layer at all, move the guy to here, you can see between frames, he actually moves. And this is how we can start creating our animation, basically frame by frame, uh, slightly moving the person and altering uh, the art, uh, to make sort of give the impression of movement. So I'm just going to line him up again uh, back to where he was before. So I'm just going to make this guy jump. I'll do a pretty simple animation. Like I said before, the marquee tool is really, really useful for when you're doing pixel art animations because you can just sort of select big chunks of the guy or whatever you're making and then just sort of move it. 
So I'm just going to select some chunks. I won't get too caught up on, you know, making this animation look really good. Um, just so you guys can sort of get an idea of um, how it all sort of works. So I want him to bend down a little bit now. So what I'm doing is basically just selecting sort of portions of his body um, just to make him bend down like that. Now I'm going to create a new layer. Turn off the layer I just created. Hit Control J and then turn the duplicate on. Also make your life a lot easier if you layer if you name all these layers. So I'm just going to name them just by what frame they are. So one, two, three. So at the moment, standing up, crouched, and then I've got the duplicate of that layer I just made. So I'm going to make him crouch down even further in this frame. Uh, so let's go like that. Maybe I'll make his arms come out a little bit. So I'm just going to erase that part of the arm. Uh, if you didn't realize how I brought up my color picker there, you just hold Alt whilst you're in the brush tool and it brings up the color picker. Really useful. I use that all the time. I think it's one of the best features Photoshop has. I absolutely love that feature. Um, so now he's squatting down even more. Um, I may even make his legs sort of pop out a little bit more as well. So to select this sort of portion, pop that out. So now he's, he's, he's sort of kneeling down. So basically just have a little animation of this guy kneeling down. Then I'm going to create a new layer. Turn off uh, layer three. So now he's going to jump up. Uh, so I'll basically just duplicate the layer below it, layer two, seeing as we already have that sort of one level above. Uh, this number two, um, seeing as he's three is going to be the lowest point in his sort of crouch getting ready for the jump. And then we can just copy level two again. So I'll just need, name that to four. I'll create a new layer, turn off four, duplicate it, rename it to five. So it's sort of the same process. The whole process is create a new layer, turn off the layer that you uh, had before, duplicate it, and then turn on that new duplicated layer. So you can start sort of getting this frame animation. So now that I've sort of edited him, uh, actually, I won't go off that. I'll go off our original frame standing still. Um, and you don't have to like structure your frames like this in the actual layer system. They can be however you want in the layers, but it just makes it a lot easier if they have some sort of order to them. So it actually detects anything. Anything you do in the frame, it will detect between different frames. So I can actually move this guy and you can see now he's moved. <laughs> he's doing a little jump. So I'll actually change a little bit of a um, few things about him as well. Maybe make his feet point down. Um, I think that's probably enough. And then I'm going to create a new layer, turn off that, duplicate it, rename it to six, Ooh, not 67, just six. Um, and then I'll make him even higher. So right up to the top of the frame now. Um, and then I'll create a new layer. I think I'll duplicate five again. So whenever you're doing animations like this, where it's sort of jumping or something, where it goes up and then it goes back down, you can just reuse a lot of the frames like what I'm doing now, which is pretty easy. You, you'll find you actually be able to do that a lot in pixel art. Um, so I've just reused that frame and I'm actually just going to reuse, um, the very starting frame for the end frame. So I'm going to hit a new layer again, hit control J on the very first frame, drag it up to the top, turn off seven, make this eight. Um, so all I did there was basically, I just moved him up in five. I duplicated five, made it to six, moved him up even more. And then for the last two frames, I basically just reused the previous frames of him jumping up. So. Um, now, if I hit play, we have a little animation of a guy jumping in the air. Um, obviously, it would be a lot better if I had some more time on it, but just for tutorial purposes, there you go. Um, if you want the animation to loop so you can sort of see it over and over, you can just click on the little drop down here that says once, just change it to forever. Or if you want it to loop three times, you can do three. Or if you want it to loop a specific amount of times, you can do that. Um, but I'm just going to do forever. And then you can actually select all of your layers. Um, just like you can normal layers, uh, except the timeline layers. So I'm just going to hold shift, click on one, um, and then click on the end one to select them all. And I can click on the little drop down arrow uh, where it says zero seconds and just change that to 0.1 seconds. So that's basically how long every frame lasts. So the jump will be a little bit slower now and you'll be able to see it a bit easier. So here we go. We have an animation of our little pixel art character jumping up and down. Pretty awesome. Uh, this is essentially how you animate pixel art. That's basically it. Um, most of it just comes down to how much time you spend um, into actually creating a really cool, smooth looking animation. So now we have our little animation of this guy jumping up and down. We want to put it into a sprite sheet. Uh, so what I have um, in the description is a download to a sprite sheet generator. Um, and uh, it's, it's all free to use. You're happy to use it. Um, so I'll, I've left all of the uh, licensing and and an actual tutorial on how to install it. Really easy to install. You just go to your Photoshop sort of directory folder on your computer 
and you just make your way to the scripts folder and you just drag in this script. So what happens is once you install that, uh, we can just go to file, scripts, and then it'll actually come up here. It says sprite sheet generator. So before I do that, I'll just turn off my background layer because I want it to be opaque. So what I can do, once you've installed that, just pause the video, install that sprite sheet, um, and then come back. So I'm just going to go file, scripts, sprite sheet generator. Um, and then it basically has a couple sort of input things here. So my start frame is frame one, my end frame ends on frame eight, and it auto automatically sort of detects the frames that are in your scene. Uh, so columns and rows, if you don't know how a sprite sheet works, it basically segments up all these frames onto just one single image. So you can actually see all the different frames all together, sort of like a, a checkerboard. Um, so we want to pick something that's sort of like a nice compact um, way to sort of put these all together. So I've got eight frames, so I could do two, two rows and four columns, or I could do um, any other sort of amount of that. I'm just going to do, yeah, I'm going to do four columns and two rows because um, I like working sort of horizontally. Um, another thing to keep in mind is if you're actually making this for a game, um, be aware of power of two sizing. This might be a bit difficult for some of you to, some of you to understand on just sort of like a quick tutorial, but basically um, if you ever see numbers like 512 and 1024 and 2048, things like that, those numbers are numbers, that they're specifically those numbers for a reason because uh, if images are those sizes, they compress a lot smaller than other image sizes. So typically, if you're making pixel art or any sort of sort of animation for a game, uh, you want all the images to be really compact and the file sizes to be really small. So if you're making any sort of animation, try and make it within a power of two sort of sizing. So you can just look up to Google power of two numbers and it'll give you a big long list, basically just goes, um, you know, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and so on. Um, and just make sure that the canvas size, the height and width for these frames is one of those numbers. So yeah, um, back to back to the tutorial. Four and two should be great for this. So once I've done that, I'm just gonna go generate document and it'll create a new Photoshop document. And you can see what it's doing. It's basically grabbing all those individual frames and then putting them all into one sort of sheet for me. So now that's done, I can just uh, zoom in a little bit. And we have all the frames of my guy and it's exactly split up and it's just so much quicker if you use a script like that. And it retains all the layers so I can see all my layers and turn them on and off individually. And then now you can just save this as a PNG. So I can just go file, save as, and just save it as just a regular transparent PNG. And you're done. That's it. <laughs> so it's pretty straightforward and it's actually not that hard to make animations within Photoshop. And what I just taught you, you could really apply to anything. You could make this like an animated website banner. You could make this for so many different things, um, but whenever you're working in sort of Photoshop animations in general, you usually use this frame timeline here. Um, and same same goes for pixel art or anything to do with game design or you know flash animations, things like that. Um, you work within this sort of frame structure. And just remember, it makes your life really, really easy if you keep ordered when you're doing things like this. So make sure you definitely create a new layer in your layer system every time you create a new frame and you order them and number them appropriately. Um, otherwise, it can get really confusing and really hard to sort of know what's going on when you're creating these frame animations. So hope you all enjoyed the video. If you have any uh, ideas for future videos, anything you'd like me to cover, be sure to let me get, know in the comments. I'd love to hear all of your feedback. Um, and then, yeah, once again, if you want to download that sprite sheet generator, just go to the, go to the comments in this, sorry, the description of the video. Um, and you can find the download link. So thank you so much to the author of that actual little script for the sprite sheet generator. It's an amazing little script. As always, have an awesome day, everybody. It's been Julian of Flow Graphics here. See ya.